Good morning, everyone, um, or good afternoon, depends like where you're joining us. Uh, welcome um, to our first SCORE webinar on developing Coastal City Living Lab. Labs, it's actually great honor to have you all here, and um, we're very excited to discuss um, all the different ideas from SCORE related to Living Labs approach and how we're going to apply it um, um, within SCORE. Now, um, a bit of housekeeping before we start, if um, just to make sure that everything goes um, as smooth as possible. Um, if you may, please keep your microphone muted if you're not speaking, uh, just to make sure that everybody um, can listen clearly to the presentations. And the second thing, if you can um, go to the participants button, uh, button and then at the bottom of the bar uh, of your Zoom window and then rename yourself with your name followed by your organization between two brackets or however you know you want to present it. So the third thing is open chat um, to ask questions. Um, I can guarantee you all the questions that will be asked today will be answered. Now, either during the Q&A sessions, we have a few, three sessions for uh, questions and answers, but also uh, our colleagues are here to answer your questions in the chat box. So any question you might have, please, um, um, you know, um, type it in and it will be answered. The last thing that I want to mention that this session is actually recorded. Um, by continuing to be in the meeting, you are actually consenting to be recorded. Um, so thank you so much for um, understanding. So those are the housekeeping things. And um, thank, you for, thank you for joining us uh, today. Okay, now the work that will be presented is... Um, basically um, work produced by um, 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 you know collaboration of all the partners of SCORE. However, in today's webinar, um, the team um, that will be presenting and looking after the questions that will be coming from you, from IT Slide or myself, um, Salim Garbia, I'm the coordinator of the, um, of the SCORE project and the lecturer in, in um, IT Sligo in Ireland. I'm joined also with um, my colleague, Dr. Julia Anton, and she's the project manager, and um, she works on modeling of coastal um, phenomena, including coastal flooding, coastal erosions, um, and that's her main research interest. From, we're very delighted to have um, uh, our colleagues and um, uh, from European Network of Living Labs um, uh, with their great contribution to the project. Um, uh, Kuhn Ververt, um, he is basically um, the network builder um, in the European Network Living Lab, Enol, um, with um, great you know, experience in um, building living labs, designing them, and, and uh, stakeholders and um, engagement ac um, activities. Kuhn has more than 15 years of experience. Personally, I worked with Kuhn like in, 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 in another project. And it was always a great pleasure to work with Kuhn. We're also joined by Marta de los Reyes White and from Enol as well. And she's the international project manager in Enol with a great experience in co-creation processes. And um, she's a process engineer and um, worked on many projects building um, living lab and focusing on the co-creation processes. Uh, from um, the Institute for Housing and Urban Development in Netherlands, uh, who's leading our work package too. Um, uh, we are joined today with Elena Maria Inesnado, and she uh, has you know, specialization in nature-based solutions and climate change adaptation um, with um, um, some great experience and long years experience in European projects as part of her role in IHS. We'll also uh, have today Indriani Leonago, and she's urban economist and works on develop, development, um, different resilience um, um, solutions for, for cities. That's basically the team that will be um, um, you know, answering your questions and presenting um, the, um, 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 the score today. Now, the aim of the webinar today is to present the SCORE project. Uh, so we'll give you a brief introduction about the SCORE project um, in, in, in a few minutes. And um, so we'll get the whole idea of what we're trying to do and what we're trying to achieve. We'll also then start introducing the Coastal City Living Lab framework and methodology. Um, that, and you know, the European Network of Living Labs colleagues will actually look after this. And then we'll- and then we'll um, validate the 
evaluation framework by discussing it with wider community of living labbers yourself, and that will be looked after by um, IHS colleagues, Elena and Indriani. So that's our agenda for today. In between each of those sessions, we'll have a Q&A sessions. And as I said, I promise all the questions will be answered in the chat box or during the Q&A session. Okay, now to make everybody, um, to, to make sure that everybody is on the same page, I'll go through um, an intro, uh, a brief intro of the SCORE project. If you have any question, again, please write in the chat box. My colleagues will keep an eye on the chat box for me. Okay, so SCORE stands for the Smart Control of Climate Resilience in European Coastal Cities. And we aim to design, develop, monitor, and validate through the robust adaptation measures in coastal um, cities against extreme events to extreme climate events. The main thing that we're, the main novel thing that we're trying to do is design, implement, and evaluate uh, a scalable and uh, replicable solution that is based on the coastal city living lab concept, which is the concept that my colleagues today will detail and, 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 and discuss with you all. Um, now, the main reason we're using uh, this concept is to um, include the process of co-create, co-design the solutions with the different stakeholders to make sure that it's accepted by everyone. We have 10 cities to work with, so we will design and implement 10 coastal cities living labs. And um, the work will be based on the four main pillars, foundation actions, work package one and work package two, evidence building, work package three and work package four and five, Consolidation with package six, seven, and eight, and strategy, um, uh, synergic and exploitation actions. They're basically with package nine and 10. I'll discuss in detail, uh, well, what a little bit briefly, what each work package stands for in, 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 in a few slides. Now, the main concept of project of, of, of SCORE is to provide a solution um, um, to the coast to increase climate resilience in European coastal cities. Uh, this solution has to be um, scalable and replicatable, so we can kind of provide uh, a validated solution uh, for, for the cities. So this solution is kind of like an integrated solution between three main components. And the first one is um, um, ecosystem-based uh, uh, approaches, and those will be co-designed, co-created with the stakeholders for each of the 10 cities based on the city challenge. And then you have smart technologies and, dig and digital platforms. And these will include SCORE will develop digital twin solution prototype, SCORE ICT platforms, local sensing technologies and citizen set science kits, um, GIS early warning support system, application program interface and transferable financial risk tools. Now, those two main components, in order to make them to work, we need um, um, a very robust uh, framework and that will be based on the living lab method. And that's what we are presenting today, the Coastal City Living Lab, and how we can use it to increase climate resilience in European coastal cities. So the integration of those three main um, things will actually produce um, the integrated, validated solution that SCORE will present to the coastal cities to increase climate resilience. SCORE will include also work about um, um, <clears> the <throat> projections of a climate change, so high detail local projections for climate um, change for different climate change scenarios for extreme events. Uh, for the 10 cities, we'll also work on monitoring coastal climate change um, um, and we will develop early warning system, um, support system um, at a local level via network of local sensing technologies will also develop um, an ICT um, platform to manage the data. We'll also um, develop tools for financial resilience for the, um, 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 for the solutions that we will present. We'll also produce a digital twin prototype that will help connect cities together in order to have a network of cities that can learn from each other. So our 10 cities, they're... Um, Grand Slovenia, Gansing in Poland, Dublin in Ireland, Sligo in Ireland, Basque um, uh, country in Spain, o Irish in Portugal, Bender in Spain, Filinova in, in Spain, Massa in Italy, and Samson in Turkey. So those are 10 cities. I'm not going to get in detail like about that challenge for each city and how we're going to do things and what a kind of um, ecosystem-based approach we're going to apply. However, what I would advise is um, you can visit our website, www.score-eu-project.eu, which is written like on, the, on this slide. And one of my colleagues will maybe put it in the chat box now for you. 
And basically you can visit the website and get more details about each of the work packages and the Coastal City Living Labs. So more details actually on the website. One of the very novel things like um, SCORE is actually in aiming to through the, through the network of living labs is to create a network of cities that can expand and scale up and can learn from each other. So you can see like as part of the work that um, um, we've done in Work Package 2, we uh, have a detailed questionnaire. That questionnaire actually examined the situation of each of the cities based on, against each of the activities that SCORE has. And based on that, each of the cities has been granted a front runner or a follower role based on their previous experience. And what we're aiming by presenting this metrics is to say that SCORE will have a network of cities that can learn from each, uh, from each other to increase climate resilience. This network can expand and can be replicated as well. One of the very important thing, as you can see, loads of digital components and loads of data management, and that will be, so loads of data will be collected as part of SCORE. So to increase the climate re resilience, one of the um, main challenging is actually data management. So we will present um, a platform that will manage the data and this platform will be uh, again replicatable for other cities. And that's one of the main outputs of SCORE. The work packages, we have 11 work packages, 49 tasks, 76 deliverables, and 16 milestones. 91% of our 10 million euro budget is for research and innovation, so to develop the solution. And that shows how the commitment from all the partners um, uh, for, you know, to develop the solution. We have, as I said, 10 work packages. Work package one is about mapping the baseline and exposure for climate change, uh, extreme, climate, extreme events and extreme climate change um, uh, impacts. Work package two is about the Coastal City Living Lab design, implementation, and evaluation, which is the main focus of today's webinar. Um, work package three is about regional and local projections uh, of climate change um, parameters and uncertainties. Work package four is about co warning and co monitoring using local sensing technologies. Work package five is about developing the data management platform. Work package six is about um, financial resilience. Work package seven, it's all about socioeconomic assessment. Work package eight is the work package that will develop the digital twin prototype. And then work package nine will manage the dissemination and communication. Work package 10, coordination and management. And then we have work package 11 about ethics management. The consortium, the SCORES consortium, has 28 partners um, um, from um, research and development organizations, uh, universities. Um, we have 10 SMEs, uh, we have public sector research organizations. We have 10 cities and we have international NGOs like um, um, international network of, of, of uh, like European network of living labs, you know. Um, each of those partners, they have a key role in, 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 in to play like in, in developing the solution that SCORE will present um, from climate experts, social providers, uh, coastal cities, um, um, integrated coastal zone management interfaces, risk evaluation, and so on. So every single partner has an important role in the project. That's basically the overview that I wanted to present for SCORE. I'm sure maybe I you have loads of questions now and um, that's the time for them. So um, if um, um, I we have, um, you know, um, maybe a few minutes like to answer a few questions, but again, um, any questions will also be answered in the chat box. I also in the meanwhile, can I ask everybody to um, follow us, you know, if you kindly follow us on Facebook, um, uh, Instagram, um, Twitter, and LinkedIn, uh, so you can get our news um, all the time. And there is also a newsletter on our website, if you can subscribe for that one, that'll be also be great. Uh, so we can give you the updates, um, you know, um, from time to time. Um, again, um, in, you know, one of my colleagues will put the links for those social media um, um, channels on the chat box as well. It's already done, Sal. That's perfect, Kun. Always very efficient. Oh, no, it was Julia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we have any questions? Uh, we don't have any questions in the chat right now, but uh, if someone has a question, please uh, raise your hand and then we will uh, briefly give you the floor. <laughs> I 
it seems like you were extremely clear so all right um well i'm sure like well you know some of the questions will be coming um now what i would want to say that language is not a barrier so write your question in any language well you know we have colleagues from all over so uh we'll manage to get um an answer for you so please do um ask any question you have that should be no problem at all okay so uh what we can do now i can hand over to my colleague kuhn and um he can start presenting i he has more than 40 slides so i would say you know he would need the time so <laughs> so um so yeah kuhn uh, floor is yours um delighted um that you're on today all right thanks a lot so let me try and uh, do this in a nice way because now it's still not in presenter mode i think let me know is this yes we can see pre pre and presenter mode correct yeah correct perfect then I'm going to close the chat box, otherwise I don't see what I'm presenting. Good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm, hey, let me second the thought of Salem uh, by saying that uh, working together with all the partners in SCORES uh, has been a real pleasure so far, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that it will remain that way in, in, in the upcoming months and years. Uh, it's really nice to see so much driven people to, to work together to get something really novel like Salam was already indicated uh, on the road. Uh, together with my colleague Marta and all the VP2 partners like uh, Salam was introducing earlier and together with our help from uh, Energy Living Lab, uh, Fiona, uh, you're here, thanks a lot. Uh, we managed to develop uh, a Coastal City Living Lab framework and methodology and I have the honor of uh, presenting that to you in let's try to do this in 20 minutes, which is of course <laughs> always an impossible task, but uh, put your questions in the chat and we will certainly ask them. Uh, answer them. Uh, so let's go to the overview. Uh, so you have the framework, of course, and the methodology. The framework, uh, it's a bit about theories and practices where we based our approach on. And then the second part is the methodology, which is uh, based on the Living Lab integrative process. And it will show some research methods and toolboxes and supporting tools which were selected and or developed within the SCORE uh, project so far. So. Uh, without further ado, I will dive into the Coastal City Living Lab uh, framework. Eh? So uh, I think before we start discussing what is a coastal city and so on, we might uh, take a second because maybe not all of you are familiar with uh, what a living lab exactly is and what does it stand for. So I'll have a couple of slides on what is a living lab. I will proceed with what is then the Coastal City Living Lab and then uh, some uh, characteristics characteristics of the living lab as well so that uh, everybody understands it in the correct way. So ENOL and uh, uh, the European Network of Living Labs uh, defines living labs as uh, the operators, the intermediaries, the orchestrators in a quadruple helix ecosystem about open innovation. So this brings together citizens, research organizations, companies, and government organizations, which Salom already showed actually when he was showing the partners. And then you saw that all these quadruple helix actors are present in the ecosystem of uh, SCORE as well. So they are open innovation ecosystems. And, and what makes them different? They operate in real life environments. So instead of bringing users to the technology, they move the technology to the user's place. Yeah? And they do this an iterative feedback loop based on a life cycle approach of an innovation. Yeah? For SCORE, we do use the Living Lab integrative process, which is even more broad than the life cycle approach. Uh, I'll get back to that as well later. Uh, uh, and it's about creating sustainable impact like Salom was already mentioning. And uh, like, uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, work package eight is uh, focusing on uh, as well. Uh, uh, it's about co-creation. It's about prototyping, testing, and most importantly, also scaling up re replicability. As yeah, Alan, you mentioned earlier, we want to build a network of cities learning from each other. Uh, this is uh, very important in the living lab approach as well. And although there is not like uh, one universal uh, indefinite uh, uh, definition of a living lab, they do all have common characteristics, building blocks, we call it. You will see it in a couple of uh, slides uh, down the road, and there are six. So within the SCAR, we base this 
we took this definition and then we were going to think about, okay, what does this mean? What does then a coastal city live in that? Right? And as uh, Salem was mentioning, it is based on the novel concept of a coastal city living lab that expands the living lab to a wider vision for coastal cities. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's, if you look at the types in the next slide, it's more, more like an urban living lab since it's a, a regional uh, organized living lab. Right? Uh, coastal city living labs are based on the living labs concept, but they do focus on the co-design and development of coastal city interventions, like perfectly explained again by Salem earlier, and so ecosystem uh, based approaches, and, and, uh, and they involve all the relevant stakeholders in the development. So the definition, a coastal city living lab is an innovation intermediary which orchestrates an ecosystem of actors in a specific region. So uh, it's, well, it's not international, it's local. It's, it's around the city of, of, of Samsung or Gdansk or all those others. Uh, and and I, we do, I, Doing this, we need to take into account, and, and, and I'm sure Elena and, and, and Indriana will mention this as well, that the city of Gdansk is not necessarily the same as Barcelona. It depends on the size. And so we need to take into account uh, what is the specific needs of that particular city uh, on the one hand, uh, because one will have uh, problems with erosion while the other has uh, too much water, while the other one has too less, and so on and so on. So, uh, anyway, types of living labs. What does the literature say? Uh, we, uh, I think one of the most uh, famous and esteemed papers on, on types of living labs is the one from Leminen and all from 2012, and they define four types of living labs. Utilizer driven, utilizers are the clients of a living lab. Eh? Enabler driven, which are the providers of a living lab. Eh? let's say the city or, or a funding agency or a company providing a lot of infrastructure. Uh, then you have the provider driven ones, which is ma mainly on, on the technology aspect uh, side. And then you have the user driven, which is uh, the, the, the citizen perspective. Okay. Um, there's no such thing like a living lab doing one. They usually do more of these different types, uh, but they do focus on one of these particular four. Uh, um, so when you look at hosting, host organizations, so, uh, and I'll explain this in my next slide, a living lab, what is it not? That's an important question, I think. A living lab, it's not a building. It's certainly not a project. <laughs> It's certainly not a group of people. It's certainly not uh, a co-creation. It's all of it together. Eh? Uh, a living lab consists out of three levels, with, which I will show you in the next slide. But looking at the four types which you saw on the previous slide, eh? uh, there are four main types of hosting organizations because you need a captain on the ship. Eh? So uh, if you look at it, uh, and when we investigated the, the host organizations of ARN, uh, European Network of Living Labs, which uh, contains now 153 active living lab organizations in the world, then we see that 40% of them is government. And nearby equal that amount, 37 is academia. When we say academia, it's, it's a university, it's a research institution, stuff like this. Government can be a city, or a government, a regional government, even sometimes a national one. And then you have 15% uh, uh, which is hosted, led by private companies. They are money, mainly focusing on the provider driven ones, which I was explaining earlier. And then you have nonprofit organizations like uh, sector organizations or, or, or uh, citizen initi initiatives, but this is really the, the smallest part, hosting a living lab. Um, and in all, we have certified over the last 15 years. So we, we, we started certifying living labs back in 2007. So we are 15 years in certifying living labs, uh, 500 plus in the meanwhile. Uh, and we do this on six important building blocks, which I was mentioning a couple of slides ago. Right? It's the organization, uh, the users, and the reality in which the users are involved, the resources, the openness, the value which is co-created and the, the business model for the future. So how do you 
aim to become sustainable in the long run. And we do have three levels of uh, members. Huh? Uh, when you apply to our network, you can be accepted as either accepted to grow, which means, yes, by definition, you are a living lab, but you're still very young, let's say. So you need a bit of extra hands. Huh? So we will allow you for a year. We will take you by the hand and accelerate your learning curve. Uh, the other level is the adherent level uh, membership, which is, yes, you have quite some experience and you are, you are meeting all the requirements of those uh, six building blocks. So we accept you for three years as an adherent member. Once you are an adherent member, after six months, you can think of becoming an effective member and really take the lead of our network. We have a few in the call here, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, we are a member organization, so it's not me at the office together with Marta eh, uh, calling the shots. It's our members who will decide where this network is going and, and, and what are we aiming at and so on. So effective members take part in the executive board, let's say. But this is actually really a bit out of scope of uh, today's. But I think this is, together with the next one, maybe one of the most important slides to understand what's coming. Uh, down the road of this webinar. So like I said, a living lab has three levels, uh, the, not a group of people, not a building, remember? Uh, so you have the macro level, which is the constellation of the living lab, the, the governance, the strategy, the, the culture of it, uh, together with, with, with the platform which you are using. Uh, so the data platform which you were using, uh, mentioning Salon, uh, this is on the macro level because you want to use it beyond a living lab project, which is the meso lab. In this particular case, SCORE is the meso level, eh? and they aim to become sustainable. So the, the, the methodology which we have built is to support all those 10 cities to survive the SCORE project, to remain a coastal city living lab. Eh? And then every living lab project exists out of living lab activities, which is called the micro level. Eh? So this could be, uh, let's do a brainstorm with some stakeholders on uh, socioeconomic impacts. This can be a test of a, a prototype by uh, citizens of the data platform. The, all the co-creation catalog, uh, which is existing in, in methods and tools to co-create solutions. This is the micro level. So getting back to those six building blocks, I'll be really brief. So when you look at the key characteristics, like we say, a uh, coastal city living lab is an innovation intermediary, and that contains the block orchestration. And they bring all the stakeholders together and then and they make sure that everybody understands things at the same way. Eh? Uh, typical and a living lab is also the multi-stakeholder participation meaning in the governance of the living lab, but also in the project. Uh, when we say multi-stakeholder participation, we mean actors from those quadruple helix, uh, which I mentioned earlier, and which I will uh, briefly introduce you again in a couple of slides. They do this via active user involvement. Uh, so it's uh, users are actors, not factors, and they have an influence on the innovation. Uh, process and they are iterating it together with you via co-creation in real life setting. Uh, so it's not a clean uh, lab environment. You take it to the place where it needs to go and, and that with all the external factors maybe influencing this. And you do this via a multi-method approach. Uh, what do we mean by a multi-method approach? Well, when you are organize a living lab activity or you are planning to organize a living activity, you will always look at the expected outcome and adapt the method to it instead of adapting the activity to the method which was decided up upon uh, at the beginning of a project, for instance. All right, a living lab, it's not a one person job. It's not something which you do between lunch and, and dinner. Uh, it takes quite some effort and there are five crucial roles in the coordination of a living lab, which is the living lab manager taking the strategy level at heart, making sure that stakeholders are engaged, that projects are defined, that the, the, the business model are uh, uh, beyond project scales is uh, taken care of right next to us. This is the, let's say somehow, researcher role. We call it human interaction specialist. Why don't, why not researcher? Well, the human interaction specialist has a background in knowing all those co-creation methods and tools and how to involve those stakeholders to make sure that it's always bottom up. The panel or community manager sometimes called, it's the, 
the, the first point of contact for all the users and stakeholders inside MISO projects, uh, uh, Living Lab projects at the MISO level. And he's making sure that all the communication is uh, understood in the same way and that they are all on top of what they need to know. The pilot manager is the somehow technical profile, let's say, which is able to uh, uh, transfer all that difficult technical language sometimes into understandable language for everyone, uh, which can answer the, the, the more technical questions from, from non-technical stakeholders and so on and so on during the pilot of a project. Yeah. And the project manager, and you have the living lab manager on the macro level, there might be three project managers uh, running different living lab projects for a uh, living lab uh, please let me know if i still have four minutes or something yeah, because then i need to go click 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 <laughs> quadruple helix quadruple helix is an, an inclusive uh, approach where you involve government industry society people and academia together to create innovations okay. um, Something which will uh, pop up, co-design and co-creation. And so co-design is actually a part of the broader co-creational aspect, uh, which is focusing a bit on, 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 on uh, really creating from a starting point uh, a tangible prototype or proof of concept. That's co-design. It's based on the double diamond design process, uh, like you see in the, in, in, in the bottom as well. So when you talk about co-creation, in the case of SCORE, the co-creation is the outcome of the process eh? uh, where all the different knowledge from the technical, non-technical government, all the stakeholders which are in the quadruple helix uh, comes together to build value and expertise uh, to, to make the uh, coastal city living lab sustainable in the long run. Yeah? When you talk about co-design, it's the solutions needed to adapt the climate hazards each coastal city is facing. And they will be co-designed through the CCLO. So then we are talking about the more, uh, I keep forgetting the number of some, but I think it's one, three, and, 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 and six. And the, the more technical ones, and there the, the, the real co-design is uh, taking place. Uh, we will implement also community-based social marketing, which is uh, somehow uh, based on, on uncovering barriers and, and, and how can we change this. Eh? Uh, we will host workshops soon. I think something will be mentioned uh, later on by all the workshops, uh, by all the Coastal City Living Labs, and this is a crucial part. Eh? When you want to uh, create solutions, you need to know why is someone opposed to the idea. So it's barriers. Eh? Uh, Ecosystem-based approaches on can slip this slide, can skip this slide. Sorry, because Salam already perfectly explained it. Uh, um, uh, I think we will share if 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 wanted the the the, the slides with 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 the participants. Eh? Correct? Yeah. So then they, you can reread it as well. Uh, of course, we didn't start from scratch. There were already uh, a lot of things done which we took into account, like the case studies mentioned and some recommendations which were made uh, based on the MIG-50 uh, from 2018 as what do you need to know to implement uh, eco ecosystem-based approaches on living labs. So all this is part, and, and there's a lot more, but 20 minutes doesn't allow me to show it all, inside the Coastal City Living Lab framework, on which we based actually uh, the Coastal City Living Lab methodology. And here, another big cheer uh, to Fiona and her colleagues from uh, Energy Living Lab, because based on the work which they did a couple of years ago, we adapted the Living Lab integrative process, which used to stop at step six in your screen, and we added the deployment space to it, because Living Labs, as I mentioned, they are about creating sustainable impact, like Salom already mentioned earlier as well. So it's about implementation and scaling up as well. Uh, certainly work package eight, the socioeconomic in, impact in, in, in the project will focus on this part equally. So it's about the problem space, defining it, then create co-creating the solution and then deploying it into the real society. Yeah? So I'll go through it one by one. Uh, important is that you have a constant process monitoring and which you see in the back in, in the bottom, sorry, and uh, the evaluation framework, which will be presented later on by Indriana and Elena will certainly explain a bit more about this. 
All right, so let's go real quick. And uh, it's impossible to explain this in five minutes, but I'll give it a try. And I will stop at step six because step seven and eight usually happens beyond the project scale. Uh, so we will take this in account and we will build the CCLLs. We will support them in a way that they can think about how will we deal with seven and eight, but most of it will happen beyond this color project, let's say. Uh, step one. Empathize. Before you start doing something, you need to say, what are we going to create? Which solver, which problem are we solving? Who needs to be involved to create that, sol uh, that solution and so on and so on. So this is the first step which we will do with the Coastal City Living Labs in the spring workshops coming on in a couple of weeks already, I think. If not, no, next week, actually. True. <laughs> um, so it's about which problem are we solving and who do we need to involve? Uh, why, how, when, where, what, all these kind of questions you need to do in the empathize uh, phase. Eh? After this, you need to integrate this and uh, this is related to the slide which you were showing, Salem, uh, with the RTD organizations and the companies, all the partners in the consortium, and uh, which are the actors in the Coastal City Living Lab. So we, we look at it and here you see the four types of the living labs returning as well as in utilizers, enablers, providers, and users. Yeah? And then the researchers are a crucial role in the coastal city living lab because they are the knowledge generators. Yeah? They, they analyze everything which is co-created and make sure that the next step is followed up. Uh, to integrate the stakeholders, we will use the, a process which is uh, called uh, the uh, structures approach for stakeholder engagement, uh, and this will be actually translated, and then it makes more sense into a roadmap, uh, which we call POP. And it's not POP music, but uh, Marta and her colleagues from NIDAR have worked really hard in translating all this well, somehow uh, uh, theoretical approach into a real plan of action, because you as a coastal city living lab, you need to know which steps do we need to take now, and so on. So. Step three, uncover barriers. I was already mentioned it. Uh, so you need to uh, identify this. And we do this in the workshop equally as well with, with the stakeholders from each coastal city living lab. We will ask them, okay, look, this is the problem statement defined. This is the context. What do you see as a limiting factor to, to really get this ball rolling? Yeah? So this is uncovering barriers. And then of course, think about possible solutions to overcome. Yeah? Only then we will start to co-design, like Salem was mentioning. Uh, uh, it, it's mainly focused on co-designing all those technical aspects, but only if we know what the, the, the baseline is and when, when the problem is perfect scope, the barriers are identified as well. So then it's co-designing before we are really going to put the first, first version into different cities and this will be spread in front. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, minutes <laughs> yeah i'm rushing I'll, I'll actually make it so <laughs> uh so this is what uh, for instance will, will be done uh, an example at the smartest and, and, and what will this do yeah. i will skip this one because step six is about living lab evaluation methods you'll hear about it 20 minutes ago by elena and uh, indriani uh, but it's also about evaluating yeah? it's lessons learned more than evaluate, hey, there are a couple of things uh, which you need to evaluate internally, user satisfaction, stakeholder satisfaction, impact, co-creation value, uh, the, the co-created values and so on and so on, but more, much more to come. Uh, and the evaluation and score, which Elena will present to you in less than a minute then. Uh, some research methods are in the methodology as well, uh, which were based on, and the score research methods will be uh, a mixture, let's say, about literature, a matrix, and examples. And the matrix, for instance, a preliminary one, you can see here within the four, uh, the first six steps which were identified. Uh, luckily for us, we didn't need to start from scratch because a lot of work was already done. And so there are a couple of toolkits already available. So of course, we will use them to support the, the coastal city living labs eh? together with them actually eh? because they know best which works best so we will co-create this eh? and then last but not least thanks to the score project and other european projects where you know was involved we and this is a real blurry slide i should have taken the high res version my apologies we were able to develop a coastal city living lab mapping canvas where you can see the three levels and eh? the, the the blue the 
the, sorry, the yellow, the macro, the blue, the meso, the, the gray, the micro, and then the orange is actually related to all. And so this is a tool which needs to help uh, the coastal city living labs to keep an overview down the road because we will be working still a long time. Did it. All right, I didn't keep an eye on the question, so uh, let's do it. And I'll stop sharing. Um, anyway. Kun, we had um, a few questions related to the presentations. So I suppose we will, that it, the, the session will, is recorded. So we will mm -hmm. share the, the recording and the presentations I sh it should be no problem. So also will be available, um, um, you know, as you know, after the webinar. Now, in terms of the questions, it looks like, um, you know, we've, you've been very clear, um, you know. Uh, Either uh, that or we flooded them with information and they are still. Hopefully that's not the case. So, uh, <laughs> however, as I said, I encourage everybody, if you have any question, please put it in the chat box or just unmute yourself. Um, now it's a Q&A session. So if you have any question, please go for it. Again, um, as I said, language is not a barrier. Just put the question in any language and we'll manage it. Uh, don't worry, we'll be there. Any questions? Maybe I'll kick um, the questions go if that's if that's fine. Um, um, what of one of the questions do you think um, the framework that um, you know um, that has been designed for a score um, can be replicated easily um, somewhere outside Europe because obviously all the case studies are within Europe and Turkey so would the framework be affected with the case studies or uh, it can actually be replicated easily in a way. I, I mentioned it earlier, Sam, the, I think the most difficulty which we will face is not based on the geographical spread, uh, because the framework is pretty solid, uh, uh, and, and I'm, I'm highly convinced that it will work either in Australia or in South Africa or in the Northern of America, I'm not so worried. Uh, what we will need to discover is the, the size. Uh, indeed, like I said, if the ecosystem is about uh, 20,000 and a very small kind of city on the coast that might differ because they don't have the resource. And then I'm looking at the macro level. Uh, so that might be a need for adaptation afterwards, but I, I, it's part of the <laughs> it's part of the exercise here. And, and, and again, it's work package eight, I think. At a certain, like, I think we can uh, certainly by the end of this uh, uh, project, we can uh, give recommendations on, on how do you need to think about this from a Barcelona perspective versus, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, deep and big where I live, uh, which is 20 times long. But I don't think there is a geographical, there's no, because the framework doesn't, of course, there's a cultural difference and, and, and a way of, of how to engage stakeholders, uh, but that's not threatening, let's say, the, the, the coastal city living lab uh, framework, nor the methodology for that. Perfect. Now, we do have one question uh, from Yakin, and he's asking, how can a living lab or coastal city take part in the project not being part of the consortium? So is there a possibility that we can accommodate um, a fellow coastal city living lab? That's mainly a question for you, think. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to question to you. Uh, yeah, but I'll, I'll answer Jochen. Hey, Jochen, by the way. Um, Jochen is the host of the Ocean Living Lab, so it's actually pretty relevant uh, to, to what we are doing here. I think at this stage, it's a bit too soon. I think we really need to press the, the spring uh, workshops uh, uh, towards the end and, and take some lessons. And then, But I'm highly sure that further down the road, uh, in a year, two years, I, I think there's a possibility for, hey, that's what you were mentioning, I saw you wanted yeah. to create a city living lab. So uh, to that regard, I can already tell you in Enol, we are planning to host a water group, which can include all this. So uh, to discuss this. Uh? Yeah, uh, like just briefly. Well, well that's, that's mainly the purpose of the whole project. So we welcome uh, fellows, you know, um, to actually learn from the experience, well, the validated solution that we have. 
and definitely we're uh, up for discussions. So if that's something that you are interested in, I would say we discuss it one by one. So please drop us a line like through the email and then we'll follow up um, with package to myself, we'll follow up with you and see, you know, when we can start having follow up uh, living labs. And that will, that's basically what we want to do. Um, so definitely, yes. Okay. Um, I suppose, do we have any last questions or? Not right now, apparently. Yeah, I, I would say we might, um, um, you know, um, hand the floor to Elena, um, our IHS and Work Package 2 leader, to um, um, present the validation process for uh, evaluation framework. So Elena, floor is yours. Thank you, Salem. Thank you, Kuhn. I will now share my screen. Let me know if you can see it properly. Can you see it right now? Perfect. So good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, for this part of the webinar, as uh, uh, um, Salem mentioned, uh, my colleague Indriani uh, Leongo and I will provide an overview of the draft evaluation framework for the SCORE Coastal City Living Labs. And from our side, we would like to have an interactive discussion with you, uh, with the wider community of living labbers or those who are interested in the concept of Coastal City Living Labs about how to monitor and evaluate living labs. And in the previous uh, part of the webinar, um, our colleague Kuhn has already introduced you to the framework and methodology of the Coastal City Living Labs. And here I would just like to highlight uh, the aspect of constant process monitoring as indicated by the line below the framework, as well as the evaluation of the performance as well as assessment of impact. And by monitoring, uh, we refer to the regular collection and analysis of information to provide basis, not just for the purpose of evaluation, but also for learning uh, within the coastal city living labs. And by evaluation, uh, we will look at, among others, uh, the impact, the effectiveness, the sustainability of the coastal city living labs in order to learn from experience and also to improve uh, future activities. And um, to summarize, uh, the evaluation for the coastal city living lab uh, considers both the process implementation as well as the effect or the outcome and the impact. So for process um, evaluation, we examine how the activities are going to be managed or are managed and implemented as um, intended, whereas uh, the, um, the effect uh, evaluation or the outcome or impact evaluation um, captures um, what have been the results um, and whether or not the CCLL has achieved uh, their target objectives. And in terms of timing, um, the monitoring and evaluation process begins when the coastal city living labs are established and ends with the completion of um, the SCORE project. Uh, this framework uh, that we are going to, um, to share um, uh, can enable the coastal city living labs to track the activities that are being implemented, uh, the gaps in implementation, and also for the CCLLs or the coastal city living labs to formulate solutions to address them. Um, in the next slide, I will cover what is being evaluated the, or the components, how to conduct the evaluation or the methods, and who should conduct the evaluation or the people. And here we will focus first on the question of what is being evaluated in order to uh, inform what the components of the living lab um, and uh, or what the components of the living lab that should be evaluated we have undertaken a literature review of evaluation frameworks, and this was followed by the identification of criteria and indicators uh, for evaluation. Uh, with that, the development of the draft evaluation framework would then get validated at different levels, starting internally within the SCORE project members, um, externally among experts and practitioners, and finally among coastal city living labs, in which this framework or this evaluation framework matter the most. And the final evaluation framework will then serve as guide for the coastal city living labs um, in, their, um, in their implementation and in their, um, uh, especially in the next years. So what are these components? Um, in our evaluation framework, we have categorized them into 12 clusters or groups. 
starting with resources or uh, what are the financial and physical inputs or resources for the coastal city living labs. We've also uh, have the organization component or how the living lab is structured, uh, who is the host and the manager, uh, what is the organizational structure within this living lab. Um, also the operations, how the living lab works, um, including what kind of business or financing financial model will that be, as well as the constraints and challenges faced by the living lab. Uh, we are also going to look at the processes or uh, within the within the context of the SCORE project, the processes related to the co-design and co-development of the coastal city interventions and activities such as the ecosystem based adaptation and smart technologies. We are also going to look at the participants um, who are involved, the type and level of participation. What are the activities? What are the specific innovation and collaboration activities that are taking place? And also the results. What are the direct and intermediate effects generated from the coastal city living labs and the solutions? What were the generated uh, solutions by the coastal city living labs, the type, uh, the quality, and the um, and the results for this. Aside from this, we are also going to look at the tools, the intellectual property rights, communication and knowledge sharing or learning. For tools, uh, we are look at the tools and method being used in the living lab integrative process as mentioned already earlier or as described earlier. Uh, we are also taking a look at intellectual property rights or this refers to the willingness to share knowledge as well as ownership of the solutions generated what kind of channels are being used uh, within um, the living labs and um, externally, the quality of the communication mechanisms, including, as well as the knowledge sharing and learning. So what is the degree to which knowledge is shared between actors and whether the desired knowledge and skills have been achieved? And for each component, uh, we have developed specific matrix, metrics or indicators that will be used. So for example, in terms of results, uh, we are looking at several indicators, such as, for example, the degree of achievement of the target objectives. And um, each living lab has a different target objective considering their needs, who are the stakeholders involved, uh, what are their capacities, and what are their uh, vision for their own um, living lab. So uh, for each uh, coastal city living lab, the target objectives will vary. And um, for each for each of these coastal city living lab, we're going, we're going to um, evaluate this degree of achievement um, uniquely per living lab. Some other um, indicators that we are interested to look at in terms of results are the extent to which the resources were sufficient to achieve each of the target objectives. And also for the future, um, what kind of actors or the number of actors are committed to sustain the CCLL even after the SCORE project finishes, and also the actors who may be committed to replicate and upscale the solutions developed within the CCLL. So this is just an example of the metrics um, that we would like to look at um, in one of the 10 components or uh, 12 components uh, that we have identified for the evaluation framework. And regarding um, the question as how to conduct the evaluation, uh, there are many methods, uh, quantitative, qualitative, or mixed, that are used when evaluating living labs. And uh, based on uh, literature, uh, case study is the most common evaluation method. And qualitative methods include semi-structured interviews or workshops, and also action research, where uh, participants uh, help develop metrics and indicators um, is also a, um, a common entry point for evaluation. And for the SCORE uh, Coastal City Living Lab evaluation, we will use a mix of different methods in order to, um, uh, to be able to um, um, gather and collect all of this uh, data for these different metrics and components that we have identified. And um, and for the last question, who should conduct the evaluation? Um, there are uh, several, let's say, groups or of actors that we are uh, looking at. So starting with the coastal city living lab leaders, uh, we have uh, 10 coastal city living labs and each, each living lab has a specific leader. Um, there are also um, internal individual members for each living lab who can also 
uh, provide insights into um, the different components and how each uh, living lab is um, working. We are also interested to look at the end users or those that will actually make use um, and benefit from the solutions and technologies that will be generated and will be actively involved in the co-design and co-development of these. Uh, we are also interested to, um, to see the involvement of stakeholders, uh, so looking at the quadruple helix model from, uh, uh, from researchers to um, government uh, to other um, main stakeholders within each living lab and possibly also experts within and outside the SCORE project team. So in summary, um, there are different, uh, let's say, groups of actors that can um, get involved in the evaluation. And um, as mentioned, we would like to have an interactive discussion with you. So uh, we would like to ask everyone to bring out your phones and go to menti.com and use the code 4374 2756 uh, to be able to participate in this um, short uh, interaction, interactive discussion. And I would like to ask my colleague uh, Indriani Leongo to facilitate this discussion. Thanks, Elena. Well, now I'm going to share my screen. We'll go directly to Mentimeter. So, again, you can go to menti.com and use the code 43742756. Okay, I see a few people are there. That's good. I see 10 people, I can see them here, 11, nice. So again, go to menti.com and use the code 43742756. You can also see the code on every slide on top of the presentation. Okay, um, I'm gonna go to the, the first question that we're gonna have. So, what is your level of knowledge on the evaluation of living labs? You can say excellent knowledge, you can answer one um, option. Maybe you also have some knowledge um, on the evaluation for living labs, maybe no knowledge at all. We would like to know what is your level of knowledge in this case for evaluating living labs? You need to press C, Andriana, otherwise people cannot vote. Okay. Done. I see some, some people answer limited knowledge, um, some knowledge event, extensive knowledge, a few people, and some of them no knowledge at all, that's okay. We still have zero person who is very excellent, who has very excellent uh, uh, knowledge in evaluating of reason, Good morning. For some reason I cannot vote. It's not active, the su submit, it's not active. I don't know if it's in my case only. You need oh. to refresh probably. Olivia. Yeah, okay, okay. All right, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna wait a few more seconds. So the question here, what is your level of knowledge in evaluating living labs? So we have 19 people so far, this is the most um, answered. Limited knowledge. 19 people out of 50 people here answered limited knowledge in evaluating living labs and then followed by some knowledge in evaluating and then no knowledge at all. And four people answered extensive knowledge, that's good. Now we have 16 people, very good, very good. I'm gonna move on to the, the second question. So 
Now, what is your level of experience? Before it was knowledge, now is your level of experience. What is your level of experience on the evaluation of living labs? No experience, some experience, okay, nice. No experience, limited experience. Extensive experience, one person answered that, that's nice. So most of you answered no experience at all, 25, 26. It keeps going up, 26 out of 36 people here, 27 now. Okay, most of you answered no experience in evaluating living labs. We're gonna use these answers to, to further develop our um, evaluations for living labs. So it's good to know that most of the people here in this um, webinar have no experience. They have limited experience, also some experience. No experience, okay. 30 out of 42. Thirty-one now. Okay, that's good. I'm conscious of time. I'm gonna move on to the next questions that we have. So you can choose more than one answer here. Which components of the living labs that were mentioned by Elena should be evaluated? You can choose all of them, or you can choose a few, some of them, maybe some some that you no important, some less important. Now, maybe results, resources, operations. Wow, okay. Results, resources, solutions, participants. Oh, that's nice. No, also knowledge sharing processes. I think it's also important. And a few answered intellectual property rights. Results. Processes, knowledge sharing. Some of them answered operations, nine people. Okay, most of them, most of you answered results, solutions, tools, processes, knowledge sharing. Yeah, all right, not so much in the, uh, for the intellectual property rights, operations as well, activities, I think um, this is also important. Communications. Okay, I'm gonna wait a few more seconds for this. Results, results, solutions. Any more? No? All right, I'm gonna move on. To the next question. What are the most important metrics for evaluating living labs? You can take some of the metrics that Elena mentioned, or maybe you think of an idea of a metric that you know that was not mentioned at all. You can type your answers in the box on your phone or if you're joining with your computer. So we have our first answer, achievement of objectives. No idea, okay. Reaching the agreed goals and objectives. So goals and objectives. Strategy, openness, openness. Transparency, impact results again. So what do you think the most important metrics for evaluating living labs? I know most of you answered uh, results before, but any other metrics that you think are important in this case for evaluating living labs? Solutions created, communications again, um, impact, impact, 
impacts are mentioned a lot here, stakeholders involved, community participation, quality, quality of the solutions. Also again, impact of the results, objectives, results, results, tools, okay. Any other metrics that you know, you think important? Co-creation, value chain, citizens impacted, okay. This, this also could be the end users, process results and learning, long-term impact. So it's, we're not just focusing on, on short-term impact, but also long-term impact. Yeah, that's correct. Replicability, okay, I think that's it. this is also important. Transferability, all right. Number of participants and their participation, number of solutions. Okay, we'll, we will keep this in mind and we will transfer everything um, in our discussion later. External impact. Well, thank you everyone for joining um, um, our mentee and participating. Okay, more of them are coming. That's good. That's nice to know. Um, we're gonna move on to the next question. If you don't mind, we've spent a lot in this one, but it's good to know your answers for our development as well. So our next question will be, who should evaluate living labs? So who do you think should evaluate living labs? In this case, it could be end users. That's very big. Maybe experts, professional experts, stakeholders, um, living lab leaders or members, policymakers. We have some here. So who do you think should evaluate living labs? End users, users, policymakers. Okay, citizens. All actors involved. Okay, researchers even, that's interesting. Okay, academics, enablers, living lab team members. So far, we have the most answers here, citizens, end users, experts, stakeholders, they're the most important people in this case, CCLL team, that's new, community, community could be anybody or end users, private sector, it's good to know, policy makers, now we have policy makers, experts, citizens, end users, stakeholders, researchers, more consortium, oh, okay. Funders, stakeholders, yeah, they are the same. All right, Maybe local politics. Two minutes. Oh, two okay. minutes, just all right. Keep, We're going to the end of it. We're going to the end of it, Salam. Thank you for, for reminding me. Local stakeholders. Okay, that's good to know. Trained citizens, all right. Expert funders, other cities, other cities, maybe this could be elaborate more team, professional team. Mm. Yep, thank you everyone. Um, well, Salam, that was the end of the question. Thank you everyone for your participation. I'm gonna give the floor back to Elena and stop sharing. Thanks, Indriani. So um, yeah, so this is the time where we can also have a discussion with you. If you have any questions, comment, feedback, uh, then uh, please uh, don't hesitate to erase your hand or write down your questions on the chat box. We would like to hear more from you, our participants. Anyone would like to 
Um, oh, actually, there is one question from uh, from the chat box. So maybe Ni Putu Aryani would like to uh, directly ask the question herself. If you are here, Ni. Hello. Well, thank you. I thought. I already write down my question because I have no idea at all actually about the CCLL and I'm living in Indonesia. And um, actually we have so many coastal area, but we never have this program. So I wonder if, is it possible for CCLL to have it in developing country like Indonesia? I, I have my research on social housing, but I thought that some of your work frame, I think, um, is it possible to adapt to, you know, some of my research subject when I work with people here in Indonesia? So perhaps um, I can have some insight from, from, from this uh, web, webinar actually yes i think that's that's all thank you so much for the opportunity thanks any putu aryani for that question i can start first responding and uh kuen or salem please feel free to to also add on to um to my response to me so the first question is uh since cll project in european countries do you have any plan to have projects in developing countries in asia so I think that, uh, well, uh, we are happy to, um, to have a discussion with anyone who would be interested as well. So I think that um, just send us an email and we can have facilitate this discussion with you. And from what I see from Kuhn's background, there's this uh, global map where all, the C where all the living labs are located. And I can see some from China and Australia. So definitely, I think there's an opportunity there. And do you think that um, CCLL is suitable for developing countries and problems? So uh, regarding the methodology as well and the framework, um, this can be, of course, uh, um, yeah, can be used for, um, for other contexts. And of course, the problem, uh, the solutions that will be generated will uh, be not be the same, but will be specific in your own country, such as Indonesia. So yes, the, tr the framework and methodology can be uh, used. Um, however, um, because of the context specific conditions, the solutions, the technologies may be uh, generated differently. So that's it from my end, Kun and Salem. Um, well, I'd probably just add like, uh, well, Elena, like, definitely we're open to any discussions and please get in touch. Um, uh, Kun, I think put the, the email of, of, of the score like in the chat box. Um, but we also, um, um, as part of the score, um, we do have a work package on the socioeconomic assessment in order to make sure that whatever we come up with solutions to be tested from that side of things. Okay, so um, if you know, um, so the whole package we're presenting, it's it includes that particular um, testing procedure if you want. So in in um, what we're trying to to do is to make sure that whatever solution we come up with it's scalable and replicatable. I'll keep repeating those two words all the time. So with your help, we can do that. Uh, so we are very interested to work with you as you are interested to work with us. So that's appreciated. And can, Kuhn has like loads of experience with that. So go for it. Yeah, well, yeah, I can I, I prepare yourself on explaining what a fellow uh, should do when they are entailed. Uh, so um, uh, to answer your question, uh, me, uh, setting up living labs, don't take it easy eh? because it takes a lot of time and effort. Don't underestimate it. You would better don't have one than a badly organized one. <laughs> Just as a tip. Eh? However, we will, from you know, of course, are, are welcoming anyone who is uh, looking for help to this regard. Can one coastal city living lab or 100 or 1000 in Indonesia make a difference in developing Indonesia? Yes, but uh, that, that's, again, not something which you will do over dinner. Huh? Uh, this will take a long time and a strategic plan and involvement of, to a certain level, the uh, Indonesian enablers, funding agencies, if there are any or other uh, funding agencies uh, to, to, to help uh, develop, uh, developing countries uh, to start. Huh? Uh, because to start, there is some some 
funding needed, I think, from experiments. Uh, looking at all the ones which we have certified, most of them somehow are at least semi or partially funded. Uh, it's very rare that the Living Lab is <laughs> fully self-sufficient from day one. Let me put it like this. Uh, therefore, uh, I, we teach, I, and, and when I say we, a, a little bit promotion here as well. Uh, Enol, we have a virtual learning lab, so you should definitely check out enol.org. I am sure Marta, my colleague, will put it in the chat. We have a virtual learning lab running twice every year where we, from A to Z, explain what is needed if you think about setting up a living lab. And a coastal city living lab is a type of living lab. Right? So, it's a kind of uh, uh, interactive eight week course where you learn everything. So that might be helpful in making sure that when you set it up, that you do it properly and that the, the all the efforts and time which were put in there were not uh, going down the drain. I think Fiona, you can certainly mention something from your perspective as well <laughs> as being high uh, experienced uh, living lab manager from Switzerland, but uh, I think, and there are many things, just fit, go and visit enol.org to start with and identify like uh, the ones where we're saying the, the right side of my background, <laughs> you find the, the description of, of, of Living Labs on, on our website, you can contact them. If you don't find them, you can contact me directly or via the contact that score, uh, it will get to me and then I'll be more than happy to, to get you in contact with other, let's say more local, living labs which we have in our network yeah? because uh, changing ids having a talk with them that's already very very useful i think and in enol last but not least and i'm sure marta will put it on again we have groups which are open to everyone so if you are more specific looking at social innovation we have a group on social innovation and a living labbing around this and uh, culture and creativity uh, a lot of them which you can find on our website too which you don't need to be a member for so that's actually the whole goal of uh, those working groups and, and task forces. Yeah, and I, I would add also like um, maybe a bit of promotion for Enol as well. We're you know proud to have Enol um, as part of FISCOR. Um, uh, they also have um, you know yearly conferences like on on, on living labs showcases. So I would yes. highly recommend attending those um, as well. Uh, personally, I would enjoy them as well. Um, so it's I, it's I, can, I would I can, recommend them. I can tell you when to block your. <laughs> agenda but i cannot tell you where we're going because it's not officially launched it's decided but i cannot spoil it here but uh, it will happen in the week of 20 to 25 of september and will be in europe i cannot go any further but uh, news will arrive soon <laughs> and indeed like salam uh, it's a uh, a multiple day event where we bring all the living lab lovers, like I call them, uh, related to the living lab concept together to learn from each other. It's, uh, well, it's more a community event than a research event, than a policy event, than anything else. It's really bringing the world on living labbing together. And we're extremely happy that we can do it physical again. So yeah, enough of promotion for in all. Salam, tell them what would it be when you entail as a fellow? Um, well, that actually would need to be discussed internally first. Um, so um, we, it's very early stage for for the project. We're still in the first six um, month, and as you know, um, as as Kuhn said, like and Elena, it's a bit early now to decide exactly. Uh, but we're glad to hear that you are interested. Um, so definitely, we'll come back to you with what is actually entitled. It's just, it would be great if you send us, um, you know, an email um, and we know exactly who's interested. We'll come back with an answer to you exactly what does it mean and what it takes and what we can support you with, all right? So it will have to be understand that it will have to be discussed internally first um, and then we can come back to you with this. Um, I hope that is okay with Elena and Kuhn. Yeah. And uh, for those who are uh, also interested, uh, thanks, Yulia, by the way, for sharing this uh, link to the SCORE EU project uh, .eu slash contact. If you are a citizen or a scientist, a policymaker or other stakeholder in any of the 10 uh, coastal city living labs, you can also get in touch with the SCORE project team. And you can, uh, you can get involved as a citizen scientist if you want to um, you can also get um, updates uh, if there are any SCORE workshops or public meetings or in terms of other 
uh, project related activity. So just sign up um, um, through this um, through this link and you can get updates from the SCORE project team. Yeah. Um, any other question? Feedback? Clarifications? said like um the contact um um you know um email through the website also i believe you can easily find any of us um email and kun if you can put your email elena and everybody like on the chat box if you're happy to do that um so you can reach like individual or through the uh I, uh, through the score project um you know definitely if 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 kun or elena is the best person to answer your question i'll be connecting you directly with them if if I receive your email or the other way around. Um, either way, you know, it doesn't matter how you contact us, you'll get an answer from all of us um, in, in well in agreed in, in a way. So um, um, I think, do we have any other, oh, we have a hands up, so Sriti, so please go. You can have your mic on, please, if you wanna, if you have a question. Sorry. Okay, while waiting for Srijita, um, Neri asks a question. Have you designed any projects for non-coastal living labs too? No um, kidding. <laughs> yeah, well, um, personally, I've been involved in, in two. Um, um, and Cone has been involved in so many, I suppose. Um, so uh, I think Cone, you can go for this one. You'll, he, you'll be, yeah. Cu currently, Eno is involved in 12 European funded uh, projects where Living Labs are developed or uh, supported, eh? the creation of it. Uh, personally, I have in, oh, in my previous career at IMAC, which is one of the founding members of IMAC, I think I've ran 250 living labs, but then more as a service to companies and, 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 and SMEs. A living lab as a service is a way of living labbing in which an organization on a micro level, remember my explanation earlier, offers all the, uh, all the things needed to run a living lab project to companies where you don't have the skills to do so, uh, or the time, or the, the will, uh, and then they run it for them. So for IMEC, which is a research institution in Flanders, Belgium, I ran 200 of these. And yeah, well, to answer your question, uh, Neri, uh, they were all non-coastal city living lab projects because this is literally the first where we are designing a coastal city living lab so as in a, a, a in a structured way like we are doing it within the score so this is really novel and what i would add like um kuhn is um the use of living lab has been promoted quite a lot in, in, in tackling environmental um issues um recently so um, you have iScape, um, which basically using Living Lab for um, tackling um, air quality issues. Then you have Oprandum mm -hmm. using, you know, Living Labs to tackle like hydrological risks. Then you have a score for, um, you know, enabling cities to act against climate change. There is a new one just got funded. Um, I'm involved in um, for to support communities, um, you know, for sea users and, and so on. So for environmental issues. It's now the trend, you know, it's, you know, it has been learned the lesson that living labs is the way to go and kind of like the application is, is, is widening in a way. Yeah. When you look at the water related uh, projects funded by the EC on top of the ones which you were mentioning score, uh, uh, Salam, sorry, <laughs> there are five water projects uh, funded uh, of which three uh, are supported by Enol and all of them contain living living. And eh? then this with different focus. Uh, we are focusing on coastal cities now in SCAR. They are focusing on, on the reuse of, of, of pollinated water or the desalination or the, the circular economy aspect to it and, and so on and so on. So and that's only water. Uh, we are uh, when you talk about nature-based solutions, you have Unilab, you have uh, Urban, which is about urban living. You have so many 
uh, things in, uh, in living level. So that's why I was saying at the beginning, there's no such thing like you have the high level definition, which we use at Eno, because that's fitting somehow every living lab in the world, but every type, uh, coastal versus urban versus water versus culture versus, they all have different focus. Uh, so, but they do have those common blocks, which I was mentioning. So yes, the answer, long story short, Neri, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have additional oh yeah. sorry Salem. so no go for it i was just looking at the chat box you go for yeah. it yeah we yeah uh, i was also going to say uh that there are two additional questions in the chat box so the first question is are there any projects in africa uh projects uh probably yes uh, uh we do have uh, if i'm not mistaken three living lab organizations from uh africa in our network and we are supporting two of them in founding a living lab network in africa so we will not run it but we will help them to get it up and running and they are hosting the project again when i'm talking about living labs i'm talking the macro level eh? the organization so projects most probably yes certainly yes in africa uh, to answer immediately then uh the the question from from uh, neri Tech-based smart city design as a living lab. Have a look at living in EU. That's the whole idea. Digital innovation hubs can be run using the living lab methodology as well. And this is, I think, partially what you are referring to, Neri. Uh, and yeah, Dorenda's question, we, we somehow already partially answered, huh? but uh, we still need to see. I saw them, but maybe you can take this one. Uh, well, also, I just want to comment very quickly on on, on projects in Africa. There is, um, there'll be, um, you know, a few Horizon Europe calls, like actually asking, um, uh, well, uh, funding projects in Africa in the area of transportation and um, behavior change um, related to transportation issues and safety. And some of them is actually suggesting uh, requiring the use of living lab approach. So again, so there are some European funding coming that way, um, as we can see. So. Um, um, I, I suppose there will be, and there is uh, living labs um, to be implemented in, in, well, or already implemented in Africa as well. Yeah. Um, um, okay, now there is a, an interesting question about um, uh, tech-based smart city design as a living lab to, well, um, we're practically using the coastal city living lab to co-design um, our technological um, solution in a way. So for example, uh, as part of a score, I'll just keep the answer to a score. Um, so as part of a score, we're developing a prototype of digital twin solution to enable cities to monitor uh, climate resilience and to provide um, you know, answers to different what if scenarios um, that will happen in the cities. And in order to actually define the functionalities for each of the users of this platform, this kind of bit has to be designed, co-designed through the living lab approach. So you'll have your citizens, either uh, you'll have your stakeholders identified. Every you know everything Paul and, and Elena explained will be applied for work package A. The same thing will be applied for the um, um um early warning support system that is based on using um local sensors technologies it's again going to co-design co-designed and the data will be collected by the different stakeholders is through the um the living lab approach or the coastal city living lab approach so everything if you think about the living lab it's kind of like the motor that you know um, um, move, move that you know, make all the um, components of the project moving. So everything will be done within um, the living lab. So yes, um, it's 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 all tech based <laughs> if you want to. Yeah, and when you look at the, at the, our members, a uh, lot of lots of them uh, driv, uh, city driven, uh, so hosted yeah. by a city, uh, a focus on the living test bed aspect, uh, which is then looking back at my four types, the provider driven version, uh, and they use. Uh, a lot of tech inside their smart cities. The, the first one I can think of is uh, uh, City of Things in Antwerp, IoT, at Deploy. 
tens of thousand sensors all over the city co-created with the citizens and then use this as a living lab for not only living labbing but also citizen science and, and, and all of this kind of stuff to improve the daily life of the inhabitants of the city of Antwerp, for instance. But this is certainly the, hey, does every digital innovation hope is a living lab? No, because you can be really pushed down, eh? <laughs> but you can, Organize a digital innovation hub or a tech driven smart city approach, bottom up as well. And, um, we're not going to pretend that it's, I, I get the question and where you're coming from. I'm not going to pretend that it's an easy job because, as part of the research and innovation in the score, we get this um, kind of like um, questions and doubts from the developers of the tech digital technologies and the developers of, of, of the living labs. And what we're trying to make sure that we provide an example on how this can be done in a very um, organized and efficient way. So we're not gonna pretend that's an easy, um, an easy task, but it's actually, you know, we're developing as part of, part of the process. We have another question from Sujita. Um, what encompasses the living lab concept? So a, a bit of clarity regarding what are the components or what does the living lab concept covers? So maybe this is a, con uh, a question for you, Kun? Yeah, this is related to, to, to the beginning of my, my presentation. And uh, I, so the living lab concept contains three levels. Like I say, this is the most important part, micro. Eh? a constellation of partners working together in a long term with a strategy, a vision, a shared vision, uh, defining a, 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 a business plan uh, and, and, and working in an open mindset on the macro level. Uh. In the meso level, you will define projects which will be plugged into that uh, on, on that macro level. Uh. This can be coastal city, but next time you want to re renovate a local opera, which has nothing to do with coastal city. Yeah, that's a living lab project, but you can do, it's a way of thinking, eh? the concept and the meso level projects and the micro level activities involving all those stakeholders. Eh? That's the three leveled approach. If I need to mention one more thing, it's the six blocks. Eh? You need to be the orchestrator, a living lab is an orchestrator, a central point, bringing those stakeholders together eh? using uh, many different approach, a holistic approach uh, to everything which you try to organize. Uh, it's about multi-stakeholder participation, not presence, participation, uh, active participation. Same for the users. Uh, they are not just collectors of data. No, they, they, they provide feedback uh, and, and so on and so on uh, via co-creation in real life setting. Meaning you're not doing it in a clinic laboratory somewhere in a building or in, an, in, in a city. No, you really move the technologies if you want to talk about technologies to where the end users are. Uh, so that's the most clear answer I can give you to that one. I hope that's, that, that's a bit clear. How is this related to field study? A uh, field study, well, field, field study is a participatory tool. Uh, or methods which you use to co-create innovation. Uh, this is implementing, this is piloting. Uh, Marta uh, is here at uh, the POPs coming on soon, uh, pilot operation plan. This is how do you translate this into really uh, making this happen? And a field study, closed or open, uh, to, open uh, to, to, to elaborate on this discussion can be a part mainly in step uh, six, uh, test, evaluate, and, 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 and prototype. It can start already if there's prototyping involved. I hope that was an answer to your question. Uh, I'm not... <laughs> Any more questions? one more question oh yeah i think um uh, somebody's asking about lines in the trees uh, again Kuhn, that's that's yeah. new so you can provide i suppose the answers um uh andrew uh, correct me if i'm wrong you want to know 
who's paying for the living lab or what 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 kind of hey, the services of the living lab what hey, maybe you should briefly mute yourself because the answer can be an hour long if i answered this question <laughs> andrew hi and um, good afternoon everyone um hi. i'm interested in the idea obviously for the first time hearing it all there is a big um, information download and i'm still processing it all um I uh, can easily take away and, and, and do some research on a little bit more detail on what the living labs provide us. Um, one of the things that um, may be the first hurdle is the, is the costing for the use of the, of the system. Um, so that's something I'd like to know up front. Is it sort of based on a, on a user license? Um, if you've got a large number of uh, stakeholders and participants, um, depending on the licensing model, it might be prohibitively expensive, I, I think. Yeah, <laughs> okay, a living lab is not a system. <laughs> it's a it's a way of thinking, eh? Andrew. So okay. setting, up, setting up a living lab on the, I, what you need to do, uh, looking at, at your title at, as Department of a, a Public Work, then you are a funder probably at a certain stage, you want to set up a living lab, then you need to do it on the micro level first. If you don't want to do it yourself, you might be funding things like SCORE here, where there, there will be in the MISO level living lab initiatives being set up, and then you hope that uh, they survive the project stage. Huh? Um, it has to has it to do with licensing and fees? Yes, of course. It was the lowest voted, which was very surprising to me, by the way, in Driani intellectual property rights, which is from the private sector perspective, usually the one, the most important. I don't know, whose idea is this in the end? Huh? So that's what we mean by IP processes. Huh? You co-create ideas uh, and you co-develop solutions. And yes, there are many different, uh, this would really, really take me uh, way too far for this particular session. Huh? Uh, many different ways of licensing this. Is a living lab expensive? Yes, but not based on the explanation which you are giving, Andrew. The, the expenses come in, in, in other places. The licensing, I, I don't think, well, in those 200 projects, which I was mentioning from IMEC, we never, ever, never, never, never paid a user or a stakeholder to participate in the project. So if that's your worry, because that's going to be too expensive, I can take that away because you want participants to participate from intrinsic motivation, not from extrinsic motivation because your feedback will be biased otherwise. It's impossible to answer your question, Andrew, in five minutes. <laughs> I should say, okay. I'm with you. Show, show, a visit or participate in a virtual learning lab and you will understand how everything is collected because this yeah. would take me eight weeks to explain. Well, well, I would suggest here, Kuhn, um, I, I, if, if you let me guys like jump in here. Um, of um, course. So I, I get I get where is Andrew um, coming from. Um, um, so it's 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 about setting up the initiative and how we set up the initiative and you know who's going to contributing and do we need to get the license for it? Well, it's a framework. Um, um and uh, that will tackle a certain issue but what i would suggest is um i i i can get like andrew is is part of the department of public works here in ireland so uh you are more than welcome to attend um a workshop here in sligo um, um in the next month so um, well in this month now so um it's in the middle of march so if you would please drop us an email and then we'll we'll follow up and Kuhn will actually be there um, and work package too. We, you know, our partners will be there and it's going to be a, a day long if you can make it. Uh, so we'll be happy hosting you here um, and we can discuss all day long about uh, how we, you know, you can, we can set up a, a city living lab or a living lab and you'll help us actually setting up the living lab in Sligo, which can be like kind of um, a practical um, 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 uh, way of getting to know a little bit more about the living lab concept if that would work with you so um if if you want, would be interested please um you know send us an email and we'll make sure that we'll have you on the invitation list 
Sounds great. Thank you so much. I'll drop you an email with one or two other questions uh, that we can take offline. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, I suppose we have, I lost track of the questions there. I think we have them all now. I just answered the last one from Nelly. Yeah. And if, yeah, if there are no other questions, I guess we can officially wrap up the session. It's now 12.39 and uh, we are supposed at 12.45 and we can have, let's say, a short, uh, yeah, for our end, from IHS, we would like to thank everyone uh, for those, uh, for everyone who participated in this session. I have also written down my um, address um, on the chat box and if you have any question regarding the evaluation for Framework for Coastal Living Labs, we are would be happy to have a discussion with you and we are particularly also interested to to get to know the four people who said that they are uh, have quite extensive experience on living lab evaluation. So uh, we would like to get in touch with you as well. Uh, Salem Kun, your final words. Yeah, I was I was one of them, so you can skip me off the list. <laughs> I was about to say I can't count them here, but you know, hopefully I'll um yeah. Uh, Kun, do you want to go for your final words? Well, no, yeah, just a, an open invitation. You put it your email there, uh, Salom. I did the same. If you have any questions, just contact me because this will take sometimes way beyond the, the scope of, of this particular very interesting uh, webinar. Thanks for your very inspiring questions. Uh, every uh, stupid questions don't exist, uh, only stupid answers. Uh, so uh, thanks a lot. Um, and yeah get in contact whenever something is not needed uh, and not clear or, or you want to know more about score and, and so on. Well, yeah, from my side, um, I would like to thank you so much for attending. I would like especially to thank Work Package 2 um, um, uh, team and especially Lane and Kuhn like for arranging um, um, this um, webinar. And thanks for you all for the interesting questions and discussions. It's actually very helpful. And I I'm sure like we've got loads of feedback. Everybody got their notes full there and loads of work for us. Do get in touch if you have any question, if you have any comments, any doubts. Um, we actually looking for your help and we're looking to work for with you as well. So um, uh, looking forward to hearing from you and um, we'll probably have a series of webinar maybe coming. So we'll uh, keep you informed and um, we will please follow our news uh, um, subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on, 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 on the different social media channels. That's the last message. So we can stay in touch and stay working with you and take it in comments and feedback. Thank you so much. Uh, pleasure talking to you all. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Matt. Bye.